I thought it would be worth doing a demonstration of uh, the Schaefer curve or the logistic curve. Now if you remember, um, we talked about this in lecture and we went through the idea that it's only applicable to stable state populations. Um, and the concept basically says that if you have, a, if we talk about it from the point of view of effort for fishing, a low level of effort will only catch a small number of fish because there um, uh, there's not a lot not a lot of fishing boats trying to catch stuff. A high amount of effort won't catch a lot of fish because too many boats are chasing the fish and they'll only catch a small amount and they'll or they'll they in total together they'll catch so much that they reduce the size of the the population that that produces more fish each year. And there's some intermediate level at which the, you catch just enough fish, you reduce the population by a certain amount, but it can always rebound back to uh, the, the equilibrium point for that population. And that's the idea anyway, and we talked about some of the problems that there are, and that this point here is called the MSY, or the Maximum Sustainable Yield point. And then we did this exercise uh, in class. And we've got some we've got some points here. So we've got year uh, down here. We've got effort, and we have yield. And the first thing that we had to do was work out catch per unit effort. So I'll name the column C P U E catch per unit effort. And catch per unit effort is simply catch or yield divided by effort. Okay, and then we can copy that down. Now we need to do that plot where we um, we plot effort against catch per unit effort, and uh, so we need to do a, a straight line plot there. So easiest way to do that, I think, is to bring them out. So we need effort, and we need catch per unit effort in another column, and then I want to insert a graph. I'll do a scatter graph not joined up. And there we can see some sort of relationship. Now if I right click on one of the points I can add a trend line. And I want it to be linear. I want to see what the equation is and I might as well collect the R squared as well. Uh, and then just so we know what we're doing I'll just add the uh, axis titles as well. So primary axis title we'll say that's effort and we'll add the primary vertical title and we'll say that's set catch per unit effort oops okay and it, it makes sense you've got a graph here that shows as you increase effort the catch per unit effort decreases so uh, when there are lots and lots of boats around you each boat or each unit effort doesn't catch many fish. When there are fewer boats around then each unit effort or each boat uh, catches lots of fish. When there's only one boat around or one unit effort then uh, or you know when there's a very small number of boats around then you catch the most fish. And we talked about this theoretical point here which is the point where uh, so, so if we think about it from the point of view, if you had one boat, that boat would catch as much fish as it, uh, you know, would catch lots and lots of fish. If there was half a boat, it would catch even more fish because it, it you know, there'd be even more fish around in theory. And so there's this kind of theoretical point where you've got a really, really, really small amount of effort, but the amount of catch per unit effort, even though the catch uh, in total is quite low, the catch per unit effort uh, is as high as it possibly could be. And we need both of those points to work out the theoretical uh, yield that you have for a, a set number of boats. And so those those values are, we've got um, A, which is the intercept, and the intercept is here. And that's 48.798, so 48.798. And we have B, which is the slope, and the slope is minus 0.5. You know it's a minus uh, slope because the slope's going down. If it was plus 0.5, it would be going straight up. So we can put in, I'll put not 0.501, and you'll see why in a minute. 
let's move this out of the way, we don't need that. So now we want to work out uh, pred yield, okay? And if you remember uh, the the um, what's the equation for predicted yield? Can you remember now? Okay, so it's uh, effort <laughs> times, and then we have to put brackets in uh, a minus. I put another bracket in. B times effort again, okay. And oops, I must have missed it. I missed a bracket off. Right, carry on. Uh, so let's put a bracket on for me. Now we can see that that value there, 476, isn't a million miles away from 550. Good point here to sort of um, think: uh, Am I in the right ballpark or not? So, so we are in the right sort of ballpark. Okay. So now, if you think, if I click on here again, it'll show me the 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 part, the the cells that I'm using for this equation. So we're using B4, um, and we're using G27 and G28. Now G27 and G28, if you remember from last time, we don't want the the references to move when we copy this equation down. So in order to stop it moving past 27, we put a dollar in front of 20, 27, and to stop it moving past 28, we put a dollar in front of 28, and press return. And now if I copy those down. I'll use Control D. I'll copy them down. You can look and you can see that it looks like actually there's a fairly good um, uh, uh, correspondence between those two. But we could plot that and show it and um, yeah, that, that there's a good um, correspondence there. In fact, let's do that. So we can select that one, and then if I press Control and select that one, and then do Insert Scatter and plot a scatter graph, you can see. That there's a fairly good relationship between the two. A little bit curvy linear. That might be because we're plotting um, effort from the same place against effort. Uh, which is something else that I spoke about when we um, when we we talked about doing this. And ideally, what you would do is you would get your yield from the fishery and you catch per unit effort from scientific uh, trawls, uh, where you worked out you know how much was caught per pot or per hour trawling, and then sort of linked and rather than taking this, the data from exactly the same place which if you take data from the same place that um, that can cause all sorts of problems right so now I want to plot effort against uh, yield that's the real yield oops I wonder if it, uh, oops let's see there yeah. let's start again right so I want to plot effort against yield against predicted yield right so I've selected those three using control and then I do insert scatter and there we go that looks quite reasonable doesn't it now so the first column are the real data and the second column are the predicted data so let's just change that um, format data series I quite like to get rid of the markers I don't have any of them I have a line I have a solid line I'm going to make it black I don't want it to be too thick. Can I line style? There we go. So I'll make it um, two five. Close and look at that. So there we can see we have this relationship between uh, effort and uh, yield, which sort of kind of makes sense, I think, doesn't it? So let's just put the axis titles in. So our horizontal axis title is effort. And the primary vertical title is catch or yield. Okay, so we got all that now. And but what we wanted to know uh, is what level of effort gives us this uh, maximum sustainable yield point here. This is a maximum. It's somewhere around about here. We know it's somewhere between. That's 40 there and 45, 50 there, you know, so 40 and 50. So we want to know how much effort um, is required to maximize the yield. And this is where we used the um, goal seek um, or solver. So if I take this, I'll just use this box here. So that's predicted yield. And if you remember, I can change, I can, let's, let me just shade that uh, box. 
some sort of colour so you know which one I'm looking at. So it's that one. Now if I change effort, I can change that value. So if I make it, uh, let's see, make it um, 30, you can see that value changes there. also changes the chart, but that doesn't really matter. Um, if I make it 40, it goes from 1013 up to 1150, and that's a bit higher. Now uh, what about 50? 1187. Okay, so it's, we know it's somewhere around 50, but if we wanted to be really, really precise, we would use solver. So we go to data, we go to we click on solver, and we say we want to set this cell there to its maximum value by changing that cell there, and then we ask it to solve it. And it goes away, it thinks about it, and it comes back, uh, and it says 48.7, an effort of 48.7 will give us 1,188 tons or fish or whatever and there you can see the point where the maximum sustainable yield is okay and that's that's how it works